Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Coach Craig's Sports. Today is Friday, December 9th, and this is the NBA DFS video for today. So in today's video, we'll be taking a look back at yesterday's picks, seeing how they turned out. Talking about the injuries in play for tonight's slate, I believe it's an 11-game main slate overall. And then going over to my core picks for both DraftKings and FanDuel for tonight. Once again, I'm having a little bit of issues logging into FanDuel via my laptop. Hopefully, we'll have that fixed by next week, but I'll just be going over those picks. just won't be up there on the screen overall. But with that being said, we'll get started with a recap of yesterday's picks. On the DraftKings side, we have point guard Jalen Green, $6,900. Looking for 34, 35 points. I got to 23.75. He ended up being a mess. Only played 30 minutes in this game. 5 for 17 shooting from the field. So not his best performance. And, you know, he really just scored the ball yesterday. Ended up being a little bit of a blowout as well. Even though the score looks a little bit closer than it actually ended up being. Then at shooting guard, we have Tyler Hero at $7,700. Looking for 38, 39 points. I'm got a 39.25, so he was a hit yesterday. Then at small four, we had Kelton Johnson at $7,600. We were looking for 38 points. I'm got to 42.25, so he was a hit as well. At power four, we had Jeremy Grant. $7,400, looking for 37 points. Adam got to 30.75, so he ended up being a mess yesterday, 6 for 15, shooting from the field. Mainly scored the ball, maybe lost out on a couple minutes yesterday, but not the end of the world play, but definitely could have been a little bit better overall. And then last but not least, at center, we had Charles Bassey at $3,600, looking for 18 points. Adam got to 30.75, so he was a hit as well, so we had three hits, the two misses there. If he had some other decent plays, he still had a chance of cashing, but overall, yesterday was a little bit more difficult slate. And then on the Fandle side, we had Jalen Green once again, $6,700. We were looking for 33, 34 points. I got to 23.6, so obviously he was a miss. Already talked about the reasons why. Then at shooting guard, we had Bruce Brown at $5,600. Looking for 28 points. I got to 19.8, so unfortunately he was a miss as well. Only played 28 minutes yesterday. He had been up over 32 minutes more times than not. So obviously if we get 32, 35 minutes out of him, going to be looking a little bit better and probably get closer to the projection we were looking for at that 28 points. Then a small four, we have Kellen Johnson at $7,500. Looking for 37, 38 points. I got to 38.9, so he ended up being a hit. Then at power forward, we have Marcus Morris at $4,900. Looking for 24, 25 points out him. He played a ton of minutes yesterday. Just didn't do too much overall. Four for 10 shooting from the field. Mainly scored the ball. Only ended up with 17.3 points, so he obviously was a miss. And then last but not least, we had Joseph Nurkic at center. $7,200. Looking for 36 points out him. Got to 43.8, so he was a hit. A little bit tougher day on the DraftKings side overall. You had to have four other really good plays in order to cash, but... Just kind of the way it is, it was shake out. Sometimes these three game slates are a little bit more difficult overall. But with that being said, we'll get moved over into the injuries and play for tonight's slate. So tonight's actually going to be a 10 game main slate overall. I believe I said 11 games earlier, but I did go through and count the games now. We have three games starting right at 7 o'clock Eastern time, which we don't see every day. But definitely some good news we'll have prior to lock. And then for the Washington Wizards, they're without Bradley Beal, Rui Hachimuri, and DeLon Wright once again. Kristaps Porzingis is questionable. He rolled his ankle last time out. Was able to return to the game, though, so unless he has major spelling, he should be good to go. But if he doesn't play, Daniel Gafford is going to be a pretty good value play on DraftKings today. And then Will Barton is also listed as questionable. We'll see if he plays or not, but hasn't had the biggest impact so far this season. For the Pacers, we got Chris Duarte and Daniel Tice out once again. Miles Turner, questionable with his hamstring injury, although he was able to play last time out. James Johnson, also questionable, as well as Isaiah Jackson with a knee injury. Then we move over to the Raptors, who are without Preston Achua, Wancho Herman Gomez, and Otto Porter Jr. Once again, so no changes there. Orlando Magic without Wendell Carter Jr., Gary Harris, Jonathan Isaac, Chumo Kiki, and Jalen Suggs. So the exact same thing we saw last time out. For the New York Knicks, they're without Ryan Archer and Nakano, who's really not in the lineup either way. And then Obi Toppin is out at this point in time, so could open up some minutes off the bench. Maybe Julius Randle plays in a couple extra minutes as well. And then for the Hornets, they're without LaMelo Ball, Gordon Hayward, Cody Martin, Dennis Smith Jr., and Mark Williams. So exact same thing we saw the last time out as well. Moving down to the Sacramento Kings, we have Terrence Davis and De'Aaron Fox. Both lists is questionable. If De'Aaron Fox does not end up playing tonight, Davion Mitchell is going to be a solid play overall. Kevin Herter is going to look a little bit better, as well as DeMontis Sabonis. And then on the Cavaliers side, we have Dylan Windler, Dean Wade, Ricky Rubio, and Kevin Love all ruled out. And then we have Donovan Mitchell listed as questionable. We'll see if he plays tonight or not. But if he doesn't play, Darius Garland is going to look like a very excellent play on both sides. 
And then we move down to the Atlanta Hawks, who are without John Collins and DeJounte Murray. We have Trent Forrest and DeAndre Hunter both listed as questionable tonight. Obviously, if Hunter comes back, he's going to be in that starting lineup. I still assume that A.J. Griffin and Jalen Johnson remain in the starting lineup, and he just kind of takes the place of DeJounte Murray tonight. And then for the Nets, they do get Ben Simmons back tonight, and then Utah Watanabe is still listed as out. So obviously Ben Simmons is the big one there. How many minutes will he actually play tonight? Not anybody that I'm particularly chasing in DFS since he's been out for a little while. For the Lakers, they're without Wayne Gabriel and Juan Toscano Anderson. We have LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Both this is game time decisions, but expected to play tonight. And then for the Philadelphia 76ers, Tyrese Maxey and George's Niang are both out once again. DeAnthony Melton and Daniel House, both this is questionable, so we'll see if they end up playing tonight or not. Obviously, if Melton doesn't play, Shake Melton will probably be back in that starting lineup tonight, I would guess. And then we move over to the Pistons, who are without Cade Cunningham. Isaiah Livers is technically listed as a game time decision, but I don't think he's going to play tonight. And then for the Memphis Grizzlies, we got Danny Green, Desmond Bain, both out once again. Jake LaRavia is listed as doubtful, and Steven Adams is listed as questionable at this point in time. For the Phoenix Suns, they are without Jake Crowder. Cam Johnson and Dwayne Washington once again. They did get Chris Paul and Torrey Craig back the last game out. And then we have the New Orleans Pelicans without Brandon Ingram, Herb Jones, and EJ Liddell once again. And Jose Alvarado is listed as questionable, so we'll see if he plays or not. Then for the Minnesota Timberwolves, Torian Prince and Carl Anthony Towns both out once again, so no real changes there. For the Utah Jazz, Jazang is out once again. Colin Sexton will also join him. He's dealing with, I believe, a hamstring injury. Uh, Laurie Markman is questionable. He did miss the last time out due to illness. We'll see if he's good to go tonight or not. And then we have Fada Chetty, who is listed as questionable as well. And Mike Conley listed as a game time decision, but expected to make his return tonight. Then we move down to the Milwaukee Bucks, who are without Joe Ingles and Wesley Matthews. So no real changes there. And the Dallas Mavericks are all the way healthy at this point in time. But with that being said, that's a quick little rundown on all the injuries in play for tonight's slate. Obviously, a few that we'll be watching throughout the day. A couple of big ones. Obviously, De'Aaron Fox is going to be a pretty big one. Laurie Markman, if he was unable to go. Uh, De'Anthony Mellon could open up some value there as well. And then we have De'Aaron Fox, Donovan Mitchell. Those are pretty much the big ones. Obviously, Chris Topps, Porzingis, and Miles Turner will make an impact as well. But with that being said, we'll get more to DraftKings and talk about my core picks over there. So we're going to start off at that point guard position. I have Davion Mitchell in here at this point in time. Obviously, we do not know if De'Aaron Fox is going to play tonight or not. I'm leaning towards the side that he's not going to play tonight. You know, it's a 7.30 start time, so we should get that news relatively early. And with Davion Mitchell, $3,200, only looking for 16 points on. Currently, I'm projected for 20, 21 points tonight. He definitely has some upside for more, especially if he's starting without De'Aaron Fox in that lineup once again. Then at shooting guard, we have Terry Rozier. He's $8,000. We're looking for 40 points on. He's averaging 38 so far on the season. Goes against the New York Knicks tonight. Not really like the most favorable matchup, but it's not a bad matchup by any means. Terry Rozier has been that main key cog for this Hornets team. He's playing a ton of minutes. Currently, I'm projected for 42 points tonight. Really can't go wrong with him in your lineup overall. Then small forward, we're going down to Denny Advia. He has $4,800. Looking for 24 points down. He's averaging 20 on the season so far. But the big thing for him is how many minutes does he get in the game? In the games where Bradley Beal hasn't played this year, he's played more minutes. And when he's up 30 minutes or more, he's looking pretty good. Currently, I'm projected for 28 points tonight. Has some upside for more, but also has some downside for less as well. Then at power forward, we're going to go with Mo Wagner, who's got a kind of similar story. He's $5,700, so we're looking for 28, 29 points now. I'm averaging just over 26 on the season so far. But in that starting lineup, he's played over 30 minutes the past two games. If that trend continues once again tonight, going to look like a solid play overall. Currently, I'm projected for 30 points tonight. And then last but not least at the center position, we have Mitchell Robinson, $5,000. Another guy, if he gets the minutes, he doesn't get foul trouble or anything else like that. Going to look pretty good overall tonight. Going against, you know, Mason Plumlee, probably not going to get in foul trouble in that situation as well. Get some points, get some rebounds, get some blocks. $5,000 price tag, maybe just a little bit too cheap of a price tag for him overall at this point in time. Looking for 25 points. I'm currently on projected for 28 tonight. Offer some upside for more as well. But with that being said, if you go with these five players that I do have listed here, you have $23,300 remaining, just under $7,800 per player. So you can definitely pay up for another stud if that's something you want to do. Or if you want to take a little bit more balanced approach, that's definitely viable on tonight's slate as well. But with that being said, we'll get moved over to Fandle and talk about my core picks over there as well. And once again, like I mentioned before, I do not have access to Fandle on my laptop. So I'm pulling this all up on my phone so the visual is not quite up there on the screen hopefully i'll have that issue fixed by next monday 
So on the FanDuel side, we're going to start off at the point guard position. I have Darius Garland over here. He's $8,300. We're looking for 41, 42 points at him. Currently, I'm projected for 43 points tonight. Definitely has a ton of upside for more, especially if Donovan Mitchell does not play in this game. Goes against the Sacramento Kings. It's a very favorable matchup overall. He's averaging about 38 fantasy points per game on the season. But definitely do love the upside of Darius Garland tonight. Then at shooting guard, we're going to go with D'Angelo Russell. A guy that's done pretty well without Carl Anthony Towns on the floor. $7,100. We're looking for 35, 36 points at him. Goes against the Utah Jazz tonight. Not a very good defensive team by any means. Should be a favorable matchup for him. Currently have him projected for 36, 37 points tonight, but also has some upside for more as well. Then a small forward, we're going with our kind of value play on today's slate is A.J. Griffin. He's been in that starting lineup for the Hawks. He's been playing about 30 minutes or more in most games since he's been in that starting lineup. $4,600, only looking for 23 points out. I'm currently having projected for 25 tonight, so makes a good little value play overall. Then at power forward, we're going with Mo Wagner once again, $5,600. Looking for 28 points out. He's played over 30 minutes the past two times out. If he does that once again, going to look like a very strong play. Currently, I'm projected for 30 points tonight. And then last but not least, on the Fandle side at the center position, we are going with Clint Capella at $6,200. Looking for 31 points out. Him. He's going against the Brooklyn Nets tonight, who are one of the worst rebounding teams overall. Clint Capella grabs a ton of rebounds, gets some putbacks, some blocks. He's going to look pretty good overall. He's averaging over 32 fantasy points per game on the season. Currently, I'm projected for 33 tonight, but definitely offers a ton of upside for more as well. But if you go with these five players that I do have listed on the Fandle side, you have $28,200 remaining, just over $7,000 per player. So if you want to pay up for a stud, that's something you can do. If you want to pay up for a couple of higher price guys, you can also do that as well and then kind of mix and match in value. Or if you want to do a little bit more balanced build, that's definitely fine on tonight's slate as well. But with that being said, these are my core five picks for both Fandle and DraftKings for today, December 9th. As always, if you have any questions related to NBA DFS, be sure to leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as quickly as possible. Also, be sure to note whether those are FanDuel or DraftKings specific questions so I can best help you as quickly as possible. Also, be sure to let me know your favorite play on tonight's slate, whether it's someone from my core five picks or whether it's a completely different player you guys think I missed. Definitely interested in hearing what you have to say. And then, as always, I'll be listing injury updates throughout the day and then as many starting lineups as I can get to tonight. And then I'll have the updated core probably about 20 to 30 minutes prior to lock if there are any changes or as those changes do become available. But with that being said, if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. Definitely would appreciate it. Helps to build the community that we're trying to build here at Coach Craig Sports, which is one that's truly for you, the viewers, helping you with your DFS. Right now, we have NFL and NBA DFS. And then with that being said, if you're a newer current subscriber who's yet to do so, also be sure to hit that notification bell down below. It's going to let you know every single time I post up a new video. Like I've been saying, I post up daily NBA DFS core pick videos just like this Monday through Friday. Going to try to get that NFL DFS core pick video for week number 14 out as well for the NFL main slate. And then also be sure to check out my NFL main slate cheat sheets over at webetats.com as well. But with that being said, that's all I have for today's video. Hopefully you all enjoyed. And then last but not least, special little shout out to each and every one of you watching today's video. I truly do appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this video. Definitely means a lot to me and I hope each and every one of you has a great rest of your day.